The verdict is in. SpaceX mini dish. Is it a go or no go? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness, guys. That smokiness, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is like a tech Starlink day. We're gonna be talking about the Starlink mini dish. And as I said, is it a go or no go? Is it something that you should buy or not buy? And why? That's the most important part here is the why. And the reason will help you decide if it's something that's for you or not for you, or maybe it will be for you down the road. And I want to hear from you down below. What do you think? I'll give you a bunch of questions to answer in a little while. But until then, we're going to get into an article that I read over on PC Magazine. There was actually a bunch of articles I read highlighting numerous early adopters that were able to pick up the SpaceX Starlink Mini and test it out. And some of those early adopters are you. I got a lot of emails from community members that already have the SpaceX Starlink Mini installed and they're doing tests. I got videos. I'm going to share some of that with you today also. But before we get into this article and give you some of my commentary and finally hear from you down below in the comments, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, find it helpful, maybe just entertaining, throw the video a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful if you haven't subscribed yet consider doing so and if you are thanks i appreciate you then click this little button over here this notification button so when i go live or when a new video comes out you will be notified of it immediately and if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel there's a little thank you button down here you could give a dollar or two if you like if not that's perfectly fine consider becoming a member of the channel that would be even better and if you want more starling content like this i have about 300 videos just for you when you're done watching this video, not now, when you're done watching this video, click over here, go to my Starlink playlist and you'll see a lot, a ton, helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, how to use it, and the why, of course, behind all of it. Once again, this channel is always about the why. Anyways, let's jump right into this article. A portable version of Starlink is here with SpaceX's new mini dish, but is it worth paying $599? To find out, PC Magazine spoke to Starlink subscribers invited by SpaceX to buy the mini dish, and the early verdict is that buyers are pleased with the portability and ease of use, but customers are hoping that SpaceX raises the product monthly data cap or gets rid of it. That's my personal opinion and includes an easy way to pair the dish with a portable power bank or a car's auxiliary power outlet. Very, very important. I said this before it even came out and they dropped the ball on this. Anyways, we'll talk about that before the end of this video. The two and a half pound mini model stands out by packing the Starlink antenna into a dish that's about the size of a laptop, making it easy to carry. But despite its small size, the dish can deliver download rates around 100 megabits or higher. I'm hearing higher, which is really good. One early adopter said, quote, the mini is sturdy, but not the premium build of something like an Apple product. Very plastic, but build quality seems very good. Not premium though, which is fine with me. I would rather save the weight if I'm going to be carrying it in my backpack. He also indicated how much he liked that the Wi-Fi router is built into the hardware, making the dish even easier to set up over a standard version 4 Starlink dish, which includes a Wi-Fi router as a separate device. That is kind of cool. They ended up taking that whole router and stuffing it inside of that little mini dish. Not bad. Not bad at all. On the downside, there's always a downside, right? The built-in router is only capable of Wi-Fi 5 speeds, not Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E or 7, Wi-Fi 5 speeds. But users say that the mini dish can still broadcast a Wi-Fi signal to users' devices over 50 feet away, and some testers were able to receive Wi-Fi signal at 400 feet away with clear line of sight. Most subscribers see download speeds of 100 megabits or higher and upload speeds of about 15 to 25 megabits up. That is quite a decent speed for such a small package. 
the size of a laptop and you're getting over 100 megabits down and 10, 15, 25 megabits up. That's fantastic. The dish has one key limitation that can prevent long-term use. In the US, keep that in mind, in the US, SpaceX caps the data at 50 gigabytes per month for the dish users. If you run out, you can buy more data for $1 per gigabyte. I don't like it, guys. I don't like it. Another subscriber said it would be very limiting for most people. To give you an idea, we use about 300 gigabytes per month with our main Starlink dish. I think that the mini is designed for an occasional user. And yes, that is the case. In my personal opinion, this device is for campers or glampers or backpackers or RVers or even emergency rescue personnel, right? That's what this is designed for. This is not something that was designed to be mounted to a roof that's there permanently. They already have that product. This is once again, something that's mobile. I just don't like that data cap. We'll get into that in just a second. The other problem is that the product doesn't come with a port or cable to hook up the mini dish to a USB-C or USB-C PD connection or a car's 12 volt DC plug. Remember those lighters, those cigarette lighter plugs? That would be nice. It's not there yet, maybe soon. Instead, the hardware is designed by default to connect to a standard electrical outlet, although SpaceX plans on selling a USB-C to barrel jack cable accessory. Once again, that's going to be a little bit more money. Now, I did find this. I was looking this up. I said, you know what? We should be able to do this already. These things are like Chinese product. You probably get it for $10. And I did find them, a whole bunch of them, over on Amazon. I'm gonna put a link down below that will actually take that USB-C PD connection. It'll take that and convert it into a barrel. So if that is the case, you'll just be able to use that. You won't even need to use this and it'll only cost you a couple of bucks. Once again, I'll put a link down below to that. In the meantime, or I should say before, SpaceX Starlink puts their own out. The article continues, still, the $599 price tag is a substantial increase from the standard version 4 Starlink dish, which is available for as low as $299 in select US states and delivers even faster internet speeds. Yes. And instead of Wi-Fi 5, it's actually Wi-Fi 6. And there's a bunch of other things that are really great with the version 4 standard dish. It's actually faster than version 3, version 2, version 1 which is also cool at a cheaper price. Once again, $299 in select states, which is nice. SpaceX indicated it will eventually lower the Mini's dish price once it ramps up production and improves network capacity. The company is already selling the Mini dish for $200, but only in certain Latin American countries where SpaceX has more network capacity to serve users. I hate this. So annoying. In Latin America, the company also offers the Starlink mini dish with a monthly internet plan that is only $35 per month with, get this, with no data cap. $35, no data cap. In the US, SpaceX offers an option to receive unlimited data with the SpaceX Starlink mini dish, but it costs $250 per month. $35, $250, $599 for the hardware, 200 bucks in Latin America. Why is it that the US always gets the stinky end of the stick? I don't, I don't know. Anyways, the article finalizes with another Starlink user tested the mini dish while in motion in a vehicle and received download speeds between 25 and 35 megabits down while driving 80 miles per hour on a highway. However, SpaceX support page says in motion use is technically prohibited with mini roam plans. Okay, I get it. Obviously, you're gonna have to pay up if you wanna be able to use this in motion. They know that you're using it in motion because the dish has all kinds of telemetry built into it. It has sensors. It knows if it's in motion, it knows where it is located. It has GPS. It also can do triangulation using the Starlink satellites. So they know if you're using it in motion. Don't think that they don't, because they do. Now, have they called anyone out on it as of yet? No. Will they? 
I don't know. The cost is kind of high right now. Maybe they'll leave it alone for right now and not poke the bear in the eye. I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening with that. So there's some things that I really think needs to change here. Okay. I really like the idea of the mini dish. I think, like I said, from the very beginning, before it even came out, I said, this is going to be revolutionary. It's going to be a world event. It is going to save lives. And people are like, what the hell are you talking about? Saving lives? Yes. Can you imagine emergency service using something like this in the middle of nowhere where there's no connection at all and be able to have high speed streaming data? So you're in, let's say, a triage and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with someone or there's some type of catastrophic event and you're trying to service people that are injured. Well, you could do a live feed with this thing and actually send the video to a doctor somewhere else asking for help. I mean, there's so much that can be done with this. It's just, it's infinite, infinite, right? Anyways, what I think that they need to do here, number one, they need to remove the data cap, just like they did in Latin America. There's no data cap in Latin America. Now, will they do it? You know, if history repeats itself, like I said way back, when SpaceX Starlink first came out, they said, you know what, we're going to put this or implement this data cap of one terabyte. Once you go above that terabyte, we're going to do this, that or whatever. Well, that just got a ton, a ton of blowback from us. We're like, hell no, we don't want a data cap or we're not going to use it. So they looked at it and they said, well, we have enough satellites up in orbit right now that we really don't need to implement a data cap. So they didn't. And maybe that's the same thing that holds true with this. Maybe as there's more and more satellites, they don't really need to put a data cap on it and they'll do just like they are doing currently in Latin America, no data cap. Will the price be the same as Latin America? No, absolutely not. Because once again, we get the stinky end of the stick. But I do want to see a no data cap because people camping or not, obviously you're going to be using this when you're out and about doing some type of walkabout or some type of nomad experience. You're in an RV, you're camping or glamping or whatever the hell you're doing out there, right? You're not going to use it for gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs, all right? Most likely. But still... That little angst that's in the back of your head, how much did I use so far? Do I have enough? I need to save. We're gonna be out here for two weeks. Do we have enough? This is just, it, it's a problem. People don't want that in their mind. They wanna know that they can use it when they want and that's it. Most people don't even know what the hell 50 gigabytes are, all right? Are you one of those people? Get it together. Anyways, the majority don't even know. They just know that they're being limited and they don't wanna be limited. Okay, so I think that's going to be one of the stumbling points that they need to fix. Once again, there was massive backlash the last time and they decided to renege on it and say, you know what, we're not going to do it. We're not going to put this data cap on it. And hopefully they do the same thing here. Now, the other thing in my personal opinion is they have this 49 foot cable. That's all good, right? But I think it's too good, it's too big. Think about it. If you are out and about in your backpack and the damn thing weighs two pounds and you have like five pounds of cable, I'm exaggerating, but I'm just saying you don't need 50 freaking feet, 49 feet of cable. If you're backpacking, remember, that's what this is for. It's not for putting on the top of a roof somewhere. You don't need 50 feet for the most part. I think they should put out some options. I think they need to have that 10 foot option a 49 foot option that they already have, and maybe a 100 foot option for that person that is literally sitting in the woods that are camping inside like a canopy, a beautiful canopy at that, but then they wanna put that Starlink way out there where it can see the sky. So maybe having that longer one is okay for those type of certain people. But I think a 10 foot is what should be given here, not a 50 foot, 49 foot. I think that's just too much too massive, too long for what the use case is. Once again, the use case is for someone to backpack. You don't want cable to weigh as much as the whole damn unit. I think it's kind of, kind of stupid. That's my personal opinion. What do you think? Also, it needs to have a connection that is, like I said from the beginning, way back when, you need to be able to run this thing off DC. You need to be able to run this thing off a power bank, some type of battery backup some type of solar generator, right? And most of those solar generators, while yes, they do have AC connectors you can plug in, but a lot of them have just simple, simple 
cigarette lighter type of connection, those 12 volt DC connectors. So I would like to see that. I think it should come standard right out the box when they first send it out because it is a backpack type of unit with a barrel connector. I don't think that we should have to pay extra for the barrel connector. Just like I don't think we should have had to pay extra for an ethernet dongle, an ethernet adapter, because they decided to take out the ethernet port from the version one to the version two. All of a sudden now we have to pay because you took it out. Eh. I'm not really a fan of that. I think they need to include this barrel adapter, this USB-C PD to barrel adapter with the unit. I think that that just simply makes sense. My personal opinion, once again, what say you? Also, the 10,000 pound elephant in the room, of course, is the price. $599 is simply too expensive when you can see the standard version out there at $299. Even if you didn't get a discount, you're still going to get it for $4.99, which is $100 cheaper than this small, tiny dish. I think it's just too expensive. That's my personal opinion. Before it even came out, I said that the price tag should be $199 to $249. You can quote me and you can look at some past videos. That's what I said. Before it came out, I said $199 to $249. That would be a really nice sweet spot. Because remember, this is an addition to... It's an additional dish to what you already have. It is not a standalone product, right? Remember, you have to have a residential plan just to be able to use this, to get this. And then you have to pay that extra $30 per month to use it with your 50 gigabytes, which should be unlimited. Now, do I think that the $30 per month premium is a problem? No. Why do I say that? Well, if you do the math, it just simply makes sense. The roaming package is $150 per month, right? Well, this is $120 is what you're going to pay for your residential plus $30 for this mini. What does it come to? $150 per month. That's why they did it. So I don't think that they're going to change the price per month anytime soon until they lower the price on everything. When the roaming goes, let's say from $150 down to $130, then this will probably go down also. Maybe it'll only be $10 a month and that is it for the service. And then of course you have to pay for the hardware. I don't know how they're going to play it. But either which way, I think that the price at $5.99 is just simply too dear for the majority of people to jump in on. What say you? Once again, down below, let's have this discussion. Now, before I get out of here, I wanna play a quick video, like I promised, of someone actually using this inside of their car. Let's roll it. So that's pretty cool, right? They're getting really good speeds. It's sitting in their car. But once again, there's a ton of cable. 10 feet would have been more than sufficient. So once again, are you an early adopter? If so, do you have any video? Do you have any comments about it? What is your experience? Down below, let's hear them. Also, if you have the opportunity and you're not currently an early adopter, if you have that opportunity, they send you the letter and say, look, you can now purchase a SpaceX Starlink Mini, would you? And if you would, why? What would you use it for? What is your use case? And if not, if you don't want it and they do offer it to you, why is that? Is there something that they need to change to, let's say, coerce you into purchasing their Starlink mini dish? Is it the price? Is it the connector? Is it the data cap? What is it for you? Once again, I would like to hear from you down below. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've designed over the many years, as well as my merch and my tees and my shirts and my book and everything else. Go check them out. Pick something up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Maybe it's one of these mini dishes. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Thank you.